Hey everybody, Monsel here, and today we're gonna talk about how to render bear fat. Black bear was utilized in the 1800s and before as one of the main food sources for American settlers. Daniel Boone, Davy Crockett, they all hunted for black bear in order to feed themselves. They hunted for deer when they wanted to get the skins, the deer skin or the buck skin in order to trade or make clothing. On the frontier, the black bear was one of the main sources of fat and that's why the bear grease, rendered bear fat, was used for soaps, for salves, it was used in cooking, and it was one of the most important things that was a commodity to trade and barter on the frontier. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to render the bear fat and specifically three major mistakes that people often make that will destroy the bear fat and create an unpleasant sensation. So first, how do you get bear fat? Well, you can hunt for black bear yourself. I did a whole post about it. You can read how and why I hunted a black bear, but to suffice it to say, it was a very intense and definitely controversial experience for me to go through that compared to a deer or some other type of animal. Another way to get bear fat is through other black bear hunters. If you know a hunter who hunts for black bear, most hunters don't know how to render bear fat and they don't utilize it in any real capacity. So you could be in luck simply asking a bear hunter for their fat. Here is a list of items that you're gonna need in order to render the bear fat. One is a sharp knife to cut the fat. Two is a crock pot or a pot for the stove in order to render the fat. Cheesecloth, metal funnel, some type of ladle or large measuring cup, labels for the fat, and a ton of mason jars. With two black bear, an average male and a average female black bear, a friend and I were able to render 10 gallons of bear fat. So you're going to need a lot of mason jars. The first step is to freeze or cool the bear fat that you've acquired. This is gonna allow you to cut it into chunks far more easily. Now, of course, you can do it while it's still warm directly out of the animal, but I suggest cooling it uh, so that it's at a hard consistency that can be cut. The key is to cut these small chunks of bear fat into as small pieces as possible. The more surface area that is touching the hot pan, the quicker it's going to render, and you do want to move quickly. Now take all of your chunks of bear fat, put them into a pot, and this is how you render. But here are the three mistakes, and as I describe these mistakes, it'll walk you through some of the rest of the process. Mistake number one is rendering too slowly. Now, with any kind of fat, most people know they don't want to heat it too high because it can disrupt the quality of the fat, it can make the fat go rancid, but also uh, heating it too slowly can create problems. I found out the hard way that bear can actually go bad rather quickly, and when you put those cubes of fat into the crock pot, it will have meat and sinew still a part of the fat. That's why we're rendering it. So that meat and that sinew can actually go bad if you are rendering the fat too slowly. For example, we put a bunch of rendered bear fat in an instant pot on the low setting and we found that it heated the bear enough to create an absolutely atrocious odor which completely tainted the smell of the fat but it did not do a good enough job of rendering. This is a metaphor that you can consider for rendering bear fat. If you put bear fat into let's say a hot car on a summer afternoon you will get incredibly bad smelling bear. And that's because it is hot enough to make it go bad, but not hot enough to render it and cook it. And that's kind of the issue that you might find yourself in when rendering. So just make sure you use a crock pot or a pot on the stove and do not use the low setting of your instant pot. Mistake number two is not 
using cheesecloth. When you take the rendered bear fat and you are pouring it into the mason jars, it's really important that you use a cheesecloth, preferably an organic cheesecloth that you can reuse because there are bits of protein and sinew and things like that which need to be trapped in the cheesecloth before going into the mason jar. So this acts as a filter and if you don't do that you will get little pieces of protein which will ruin your fat. Once you've poured the fat through the cheesecloth into the funnel you should have a mason jar full of rendered bear fat. However, mistake number three is taking that rendered bear fat and putting it immediately in the fridge or the freezer. This is a problem, as most of you know, from physics class because the heated liquid in the glass can sometimes break when it goes immediately into a cool environment. So let it sit at room temperature, let it come to room temperature, and then put your rendered bear fat mason jars into the fridge or the freezer. Now that you have some bear fat, how do you use it? Well, personally, I like to use it for cooking and baking. The bear fat is predominantly monounsaturated fat, so it is a healthy, relatively stable, somewhat like macadamia nut, fat source that I will use for sauteing vegetables, but is particularly useful for baking. People use it as an alternative to lard and consider it to be one of the best baking fats there is. Additionally, there's great uses for it for making soaps and making salves. You can put herbs and different incense into the bear fat and you can use it to rub on your skin, moisturize, etc. This is a long lost art, but it is a great way to harvest wild fat for the purposes of cleaning yourself, for eating, for consuming. And although it might sound weird to many people who have been highly domesticated, it's a great way to utilize all of that beautiful black bear, that animal that we can eat, we can utilize for cleaning ourselves. It's a magical animal that myself included have forgotten until very recently. My hope is if you somehow find bear fat or you are interested in receiving some, you can use this method in order to render your own and make the best use of this great resource.